Thanks, Jerry. Um, great to be back um, at the uh, Fremantle Conference. It's always a great opportunity to talk about some good exploration that, and uh, it's great to actually be exploring for a change. Um, so we acquired the Taqua Nickel project um, just over nine months ago and, and the market's been uh, very helpful in uh, gi gave, giving us access to capital and um, we are pretty excited about moving this one forward into what will be a mine again. So um, I notice we've got the January edition of the presentation here, so hopefully it's the right one. Um, so we've got a, a international portfolio of precious and um, battery metals exposure throughout um, three main projects. Um, we've got the Taqua Nickel project, and to the focus of today's presentation will be on, our, on that flagship asset. Um, we have the option to purchase 90% of that asset. It was previously operated by a group called Asian Mineral Resources. Um, this is a group that um, sunk over $130 million of uh, capital into the infrastructure. So they've built a, a great little concentrator um, to an Australian standard. So this is a mine that's been built in Vietnam to an Australian standard. Um, we're now looking at going back in there and doing it differently. The previous owners were focused on a massive sulphide vein that they drilled and, and mined, and they left 25 of those veins behind. Um, but we're looking at a big disseminated sulphide ore body right next to the existing mine. And uh, we think this could be a globally significant nickel sulphide ore body. And that's the, the first ore body called the Banfook disseminated sulphide ore body. So we've got the BC Copper Gold project um, that's an asset that we um, acquired nearly two years ago. Um, we had a good run on the cobalt price. Unfortunately, the cobalt price went against us there. And, but we've got some great geology there, and we think that, that that's a, a belt-scale opportunity with potential for copper-gold, uh, large copper-gold systems, similar to uh, many of the BC copper-gold porphyries throughout uh, British, British Columbia. Um, we started our lives as uh, junior explorers in Western Australia uh, looking for uh, nickel sulphide and uh, gold and so we still have the Silver Swan South project which is a long strike of the Canana Bell gold mine um, and uh, along the Fitzroy shear zone so we've got some really good gold uh, under a lake cover there only 10 kilometres from one of Australia's best uh, underground gold mines and we've also got uh, the ultramafic package there that looks very similar to the silver swan, black swan, uh, uh ultramafic complex. So we've got some really good nickel sulphide opportunities as well as gold in the eastern gold fields. Uh, so most importantly we've got a nice tight capital structure, um, 191 million shares on issue and we're doing our best to, to keep that as low as possible. Uh, market cap around 35 million. Uh, to put, put that in perspective, uh, when we acquired the Taqua Nickel project, I think we had about a shell value of $5 million. Uh, so the market was basically writing off all the other assets in our portfolio. So clearly the market wants us to uh, focus on that Taqua Nickel project. Um, we're, we're funded um, for the, this drill out phase. We've got four drill rigs spinning and, and uh, we're moving very quickly to our maiden resource and scoping study with that cash. Uh, the daily volume's increased, which is great. So finally, uh, I've got a bit of a following on the Twitter and Hot Copper and all that. So uh, a lot of hard work on social media and uh, yeah, plenty of uh, plenty of liquidity. So the, any brokers out there, there's no excuse now. There's uh, plenty of liquidity to get in and out if you if you want to want to get out. But I think you need to get in. So. Um, the main reason we, we're here is because we've got this strong board and management team that's done this time and time again. So I think we've done it on every continent other than Antarctica, um, Hamish Halliday and Steve Parsons. Um, Steve is, is on fire. Um, there's no other way to, to say it. Um, Bellevue Gold, Orteco, African Gold. Uh, there's, there's a number of these companies that have started at shell value and they're becoming very large um, explorer, explorers, uh, particularly Bellevue, uh, $300 million company started, uh, Steve started it with $5 million uh, market cap and it's a multi-million now, it's one of the best discoveries going around in Western Australia, so have a look at that one. But yeah, between Steve and Hamish there's this history of creating shareholder wealth through major um, discoveries all around the globe. And it's not um, without the technical team back in the office. So um, Dr Stuart Owen, one of the best geologists I've ever worked with, he's the guy that uh, makes us look good and, 
and he's uh, definitely doing it with this Taqwa project. Uh, the reason we're looking for nickel, so I think we're one of only a few explorers here uh, looking for nickel, um, it's because of the battery. Uh, it's not for stainless steel, that's what we're used to mine nickel for. Um, going forward we'll be mining nickel for nickel sulphate which is going into the lithium ion battery industry which is the key component for the electric vehicle. And it was our friends in South Korea um, that we took to Canada looking for cobalt and they said, by the way, we're reducing the amount of cobalt and we're increasing the nickel significantly. Can you look for nickel sulphide? And it's because of that cathode chemistry that we then looked for nickel all around the world and we landed on this Vietnam asset on their doorstep. So the Korean friends are very happy because we think we've found a significant uh, amount of nickel for them. And uh, you can see from these graphs and this, uh, this cathode chemistry, they're going to need a lot of nickel in the, in the future. To put this in perspective, only 5% of um, nickel goes into batteries today. Um, that will become 50% of the market over time. So you can see there's a massive uh, supply-demand gap coming. So get some nickel sulphide. Uh, this is, a, I suppose, a good uh, flow of exactly what we're trying to achieve here. So the existing mine infrastructure, uh, so we've got this small concentrator, very uh, neat little high-grade underground mine built to an Australian standard. So this is built by Australians, jumbos, uh, big trucks. This isn't what you'd expect in, uh, in Vietnam. So we think that what we've got is not probably not an underground, but very large open pit disseminate ore body. This actually is a picture of uh, Mount Keith. Uh, the reason we've used Mount Keith is because we've got a very similar grade and tonnage profile to what is Australia's best nickel mine. Um, Mount Keith has been delivering nickel for the last 20 years, and, um, and we think that we have this opportunity in Vietnam. So we will take this uh, large disseminated ore body, put it through the existing concentrator. We will need to increase the throughput of that concentrator because the, the large disseminated ore body is uh, much larger than that, uh, the current size of the concentrator. We will then upgrade the concentrate to what is a nickel sulphate through a pressure oxidation autoclave. The reason we're doing that is that we are on the doorstep of the lithium-ion battery industry, the major players being China, South Korea and Japan. Um, LG are building a $2 billion battery factory in Haiphong, which is the port city down the road from the mine. That's the port city that the previous owners used to ship concentrate. We won't be shipping concentrate, we'll be shipping the battery product, which is the nickel sulphate. We have hydro grid power, which really helps um, so we have a, a very low carbon footprint, uh, which is very important to today's investors. So we've got the same geological setting as the Jinchuan mine, which is one of the world's largest nickel mines. We also have the age setting of Norilsk, uh, and that may, um, I suppose, be a factor in the reason why we're getting very strong uh, palladium, platinum, rhodium. So Norilsk is one of the largest nickel miners. They're also one of the largest palladium miners and rhodium miners. So if anyone uh, didn't realise, but the palladium price today is actually higher than the gold price and the rhodium price is going vertical. So check, uh, check out the charts because um, these metals are booming and very uh, significant pro uh, byproduct credit potential for the uh, nickel in Banffel. So the ore body we were talking about and the concentrator sits very well centrally, centrally located within the belt. We have 25 targets uh, outcropping at surface. So massive sulphide outcropping at surface within hundreds of metres of a concentrator. If this was in Kalgoorlie, it would have been drilled many, many years ago, mined and, and um, well, well before now. So this is an opportunity where we have outcropping mineralisation, untested, undrilled, and we think there's a belt full of nickel here, um, similar to, say, a Kamadi uh, dome, say, in Cambelda. So what we did is we just started um, systematically drilling this ore body. So this is the ore body that uh, the previous owners mined, so they mined that down to the, to the bottom, they did a couple of holes at the bottom and tested and they thought, well, that's finished, let's move on. Nickel price, difficult. Um, they sold it very cheaply and we've come in there and 
and also put a, a, a cheap option on this. But what we were doing, as we were off, uh, systematically drilling these, this ore body, this, uh, we've hit what is the, a very shallow high grade zone. So we hit 60 metres at 1.3% nickel. So to put that in perspective, that's hit like hitting 60 metres of 4 grams per tonne from 30 metres. So um, you can imagine what that does to the potential MPVs of this project. So we've hit very high grade from surface and we've just realised that it's the same stuff we hit six months ago, which was 200 metres away. So this is a 200 metre zone running up to 60 metres wide, four grams from surface, open pitable. Very economic um, metal. Plus we've got the significant byproduct credit with these platinum, palladium and gold and rhodium. So there's a couple of sections. Um, being a mining engineer, the first thing I'd look at is, OK, well, what's the strip ratio? So the strip ratio on those sections looks pretty good. So anything um, at the top we, we'd call waste because that's the sulphide. Um, so there's definitely nickel in that, um, sorry, in the oxide. So that's waste. So, and then you, and as soon as you get into the sulphide, you're in ore. So there's some very good strip ratios there. This is a, the um, ore body is almost the exact shape of an open pit, so that uh, really helps for um, uh, the geometry and that strip ratio. So here's a bit of a section of that King Cobra zone. Uh, so we were just sort of systematically drilling. This section here, we're aiming for this deep zone here. I almost pulled the section, I was thinking, well, that's a little bit uh, deep to be targeting for an open pit. Luckily, we didn't pull this section and we've hit um, our best hole in the, in the King Cobra discovery. So that's the 60 metres at 1.3, plus your um, byproduct credits. So the high-grade zone's running 13.9 metres at 2.25% nickel. That's very high-grade nickel from basically from surface. And what we did is now we're stepping along strike and we've hit it again. So assays pending, hit it again, hit it again. Unfortunately, those assays, we couldn't rush them through in time for today's conference, but um, we're, we're pretty uh, keen to see what they look like. But uh, we continue to see the same mineralisation, and that's why we, we believe that this is uh, potentially the feeder zone or the, uh, to the magmatic nickel sulphide chamber that's the source of all this mineralisation. So you can see we're open down dip. Unfortunately, there was a fault on that section, but there's a number of sections over 100 metres where we're open down dip, and we're just going to continue to chase that down using all the modern geophysical techniques that we have. We've, we've purchased our own EM equipment, IP, and we're, we're now just systematically um, ge doing the geophysical uh, exploration techniques to, to find the, uh, the source of all of this. So it's a one, and a half, one kilometre long ore body, 500 metres wide, that's come from somewhere. Hopefully that's a, mag, a, ma, a massive sulphide zone at depth that we're chasing now. So this is the flow sheet of independence or IGO. So this is how we are looking to take a concentrate and convert it to a nickel sulphide. So this is a pressure oxidation autoclave. This is a piece of equipment that's used all through the mining industry. It's tried and tested technology, particularly used in the um, refractory gold. Um, so this is a off-the-shelf type um, autoclave into a uh, solvent extraction. This is a process that's used all through the copper gold industry. So we believe that we can increase the payability. So your nickel concentrate uh, is probably running around 70% payability. The current nickel sulphate price is at a premium to the nickel price. So we, um, by upgrading to the nickel sulphate, we're upgrading our payabilities and potentially getting a premium to the LME nickel price. Um, we've got some of the lowest operating costs in the world. There is a tariff on concentrate. So the other reason why we're looking to build a nickel sulphate is we want to remove or reduce that tariff. The previous owners paid that tariff, and even after paying the tariff, they had 25% lower operating costs than anywhere in Australia or Canada or in a Western jurisdiction. So hopefully we can um, tick some of these boxes. So maiden resource, um, by the end of Q2, uh, uh, quickly followed by a scoping study, uh, we believe that as we deliver those milestones that we will trade more in line with our peers. So some of our peers that have studies and, um, uh, and resources, 
that um, obviously trading on multiples of what we are. Um, we have the strategic partner, we have um, Echo Pro, which is Korea's largest ba battery cathode manufacturer. They're looking to help us fund the downstream processing facility so they can access the nickel sulphate. So we have that funding partner ready. As soon as we can deliver these maiden resource scoping studies, we will, uh, we will uh, trade more in line with our peers that have um, multiple $100 million mark caps. So we continue to deliver the uh, drill that King Cobra discovery, very exciting. Um, the retail market is very excited about finding that uh, massive sulphide chamber. Even if we don't find anything from today, this is a mine that will deliver nickel sulphate for the next 10, 20 years. So we now need to show that through the maiden resource scoping study, then we'll drill all those other 25 other targets. There's years worth of drilling here. Um, we'll do the metallurgical test work uh, that goes into that scoping study. So that, that scoping study is well underway, looking to deliver that around uh, early in the Q3. So we've got this portfolio of battery and precious metals. We've got what could be a world-class system or a nickel uh, sulphide district in uh, Vietnam, just out of, of Hanoi. Um, maiden resource, initial scoping study, that's going to get the re-rate. Then, then the institutional investors will be able to, to um, start looking at this. Um, well funded to continue that drill out phase, four drill rigs spinning, assays pending. Um, but most importantly, we've got this team that's done this before. We will continue to do it again. This is one of those opportunities. We picked it up at five million market cap. We're at 35 and we have only just started. So we're not even one year into this and this is this will be mine for another 10 or 20 years. So thanks for your time.